with your team? Certainly. And first of all, it was really an honor um, to be to represent Bermuda and be the chef de mission for the Bermuda contingent. It was, I thought, a wonderful game. Yes, it was cold. <laughs> um, but I think the organizers and the volunteers were superb. Um, there's always glitches and things that don't go perf well perfectly. I think that's one of the things you have to learn to adjust, that okay, there's gonna be transportation issues. There's gonna, it's gonna take an hour and a half to get to the opening <laughs> ceremony, you know, those type of things. And so being prepared for the expected um, and just accept it as is. But I think overall, uh, for me personally, and I think for our whole team, it was a real positive experience. Um, and many lessons were learned, and I think for all of us, um, and I would like to say to thank our, our Pan American team and the Bermuda Olympic Association and let them know that our athletes and officials represented Bermuda with great pride and dignity. Um, and so I was very, very pleased and um, honored to be part of the team. Then you were selected as the chef. You had to go for several visits and mm -hmm. communicate. Did everything meet the expectations of the people that were leading up to the games? I think for me it surpassed it because if you had been there in January <laughs> and most of those facilities that we got very acquainted with, uh, Vadina and all, they, were, they weren't even half completed. And um, many of the chefs were wondering, well, are the facilities going to be ready? <laughs> and those of us that have traveled you know, and been to these type of international competitions, especially in, in our region of the world, we'll leave it at that. Um, it always comes together, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was pleasantly surprised and pleased to to tour and see the facilities as they were. I think they were first class from the facilities that I saw. Um, the, the, I think what makes the games, any type of international competition, is the people. Um, and I'm sure Judy will attest to this, that our volunteers, oh. they, be, they became our family. Mm -hmm. Um, I get emails every day from Berlin, <laughs> you know, um, you know, from the drivers and the van and bus drivers and the volunteers. Um, that was something I thought they had done very well because they spoke very good English mm -hmm. and they were young college students. Mm -hmm. um, and they became ambassadors for us. Um, and that, that creates an environment of ease because when there's a language barrier, there's always challenges and difficulties, as you know, firsthand. <laughs> but for us, we didn't experience that. So, um, the people were very warm and friendly, and um, you know there were 41 countries. And I would go to the NOC office, and they knew they knew my name. Mm -hmm. You know, small Bermuda with 17 athletes and seven officials. Um, they really got to know us and took time to get to know us, and really always ask, "There's something we can do for you. What can we do to help?" You know. So I think that part of it really uh, was the icing on the cake, because no matter what challenge we might have had. Um, I knew there was someone to go to, um, and they were very supportive. So it's, a, it's putting on the Pan American Games or the Olympics, it's a huge task. And it's not just the organizers, it's the country itself. Mm -hmm. And so some of the politics that, you know, in Lima, you know, there's, what, 8 million people? As you, we were there, and, and the, 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 the municipalities they had to deal with, and the police, and the militia, and the traffic, and it's not just the organizers, they have to do with the government, you know. So pulling all those pieces together, um, you, as a chef, you see a little bit behind the scenes um, and you become more appreciative of the challenges and, and the organizational, you know, drama. Yes. There was some drama in the first yeah. couple of days. Yes. Transportation yes. was an yes. issue. Yeah. The, the, the express lane wasn't open. Um, and the gentleman that was in charge said to the chefs, he says, give me 24 to 48 hours, we will have this fixed. And within 36 hours, they had it fixed. Um, and that really you know, was an effort because they want their hosting this and they wanted to leave a good impression. So I think overall, um, it, was, uh, it was a great experience. I mean, I, I came away learning a lot more about myself and learning a lot more about our athletes from Bermuda. And um, you know, we always look at results, you know, which I'm sure we'll talk about, but I think the way you represent your country and compete and, um, and being proud to wear your Bermuda cross your back is, to me, the ultimate. Mm -hmm. Madam President, you've mm -hmm. been involved in this, um, these type of events for some time. Um, what did you think of, of Peru and the games in which they just recently hosted? Well, first of all, I want to congratulate Bramwin on a first-class job. She was loved by all, whether it was our, our athletes, our management team, 
Her staff loved her to death, and I have to say from the Pan American administrators, they spoke very highly of Branwyn. And I think that's all to do with how you do relationship building. And I think the one thing that Branwyn and I have in common is we know how to talk to people and get the results that we require and to make friends along the way. So Branwyn, congratulations on a first class job. Lima did a first class job. And I've been to a few Pan American games and everything that Branwyn has said is absolutely correct. Um, when Branwyn came back from her chef's meeting and I said, well, same old, same old. And then when we got to some of the facilities, and I'll just give one as an example, the swimming facility, I was totally blown away. Uh, it was beyond, uh, in my opinion, Olympic yes, standard. Absolutely. So um, I thought Lima did a great job. I thought the organizing committee took the challenges that were faced to them on a daily basis with an open arms and with, it took the criticisms uh, constructively and worked on them, and, which made them great games. The weather could have been better in the predicting area, but to be honest with you, the weather was the same for every athlete who participated. And it's how we as a team handle things that are not necessarily given to us, the, the message sent correctly, how do we prepare? And that is something that we've spoken about at great length and we're going to be having a conversation about how our athletes prepare for these games to make sure that on the given day they give their best performance that they can. So generally speaking, of course we could have had better results. Don't we all want better results? But I think Brownwin's right. We wore the Bermuda crest with honor. Uh, the athletes felt privileged to, to represent us, and they did us proud on their given day. Um, we always look at, um, a, a lot of noise is always made about the opening ceremony and the closing mm -hmm. ceremony, and how we pick who will, who will carry the flag. Yeah. Because indeed it's a, it's a great honor to carry a country flag during the opening and the closing ceremony. Mm -hmm. How did you decide the opening and then the closing? Uh, pick a name out of the hat. No. <laughs> and, you know, I gave that a lot of thought. And Judy and Stanley, you know, said this is totally your decision. And so I, I wanted to have a little time to get to know the athletes a little bit. Obviously, I know their resumes and what they've accomplished. Um, and I feel, you know, with CC opening, you know, she represents a lot for Bermuda. You know, she's a young woman. She's in school. She's had success. Um, and I look at youth as our future, mm -hmm. and, and that's really important. Um, and she was, she was honored because, you know, they were three hours away from the village. Mm -hmm. They were in Paracas. And so we had to scramble to get them back, you know, emails back and forth because communication you know, was a little challenging. Um, and uh, and uh, she was honored. Her and Mikey came back for the opening ceremony. And right after the ceremony, guess what? They went back to Paracas. They got back at 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, and so that was, um, that was a lot of thought, you know, and of course you think about the different sports and who's had that opportunity before, who hasn't, who's given a lot of their life to Bermuda sports. And mm -hmm. so I thought Cece was a perfect, you know, perfect person to, to select. And sailing, I think, you know, we've always been very successful in sailing and um, so why not? You know, and for the closing, that was easy. Caitlin was, um, mm. I think, the success of our games. And Caitlin arrived early, and I could tell there were some jitters early on. But you know, she settled in. She had a wonderful attitude, um, and she was just overjoyed with her performance. Mm -hmm. And so were we. You mm -hmm. know, even the challenges of getting down to that front waterfront to watch that um, time trial. Yeah. You, you know. Yeah. Um, that I thought I missed, but actually hadn't started. Anyway, that's another story. And I made sure that for the road race that, you know, we got there our, you know, very early. And um, to see her and Nicole compete. I mean, they competed. I mean, they were in the race right to the finish. Mm -hmm. You know, Nicole was with the lead pack. You know, I was about 100 meters before the finish. And just to see them do the loops around and staying up and competitive and focused. Um, that was really easy. And I didn't say anything to her until she got back to the apartment. I said, well, you're, you're, you did very well. You know, congratulations. I was impressed. You know, we're so proud of you. I said, but you have one more job. And she looked at me like, what now? <laughs> I said, would you like to carry the flag for the closing ceremony? You know, her eyes lit up, her face lit yeah. up. It was just, it was just an easy, um, easy choice. And I think the way she represented herself in the country was, 
was first class and her performance was first class. Mm -hmm. Do you as a chef and a person that's been in sports all your life, do you now stay involved with these athletes? Um, just, just in contact with them to, to talk to them about what's next? I hope so, yes. Actually, on my the way here. Is yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, actually, I was on my way here and I ran into Paul Woolman, you know, yeah. see, you know, we were chatting. I'm like, oops, I got to be here. And, and I actually know what, what they're doing. They're getting ready to go back to school and you know what the potential are for Tokyo. Absolutely. Um, actually, I went through the list last night. I want to send them all an email to thank them for working together and working with me. Um, you know, of course, absolutely, because, you know, I love sports. It mm. doesn't matter if it's sailing, track and field, which is my favorite, um, <laughs> or swimming, um, like squash. I mean, I used to teach squash, but I never seen squash at that level. And those, those are squash players. I don't know how many games, do you know how many games they played within three get days? Um, singles, um, Michael played two, Noah played one, uh, doubles, they played two, one, and the team. team. Right, yes, yeah. yeah. They were just playing and playing and playing for yeah. like four days, right? And they were drenched and, um, and sitting in there watching them in that cold, cold. arena. Cold, yes. You know, but I wouldn't, do, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Correct. You know, um, and developing friendships with them and, and understanding what, you know, what some of their needs might be moving forward. So, yeah, yes, whatever I can do, um, I've, had a, I've been fortunate to have a career in sports. Whatever I can do, and Judy and I talk all the time and stand mm -hmm. to support our athletes, you know, don't even have to ask, just say, hey, Bram, we need you here, or what yeah. do you think, or, yeah. you know, but I, I, for me, it's, it's continued learning, you know, and what we can do in Bermuda to raise our game, I think for me, that would be the ultimate. How can we raise our game in the realm of the sports world to do better internationally? Madam President, what's next for the Bermuda Olympic Association as far as our athletes and commitments? Well, as you know, uh, Brenda Dale, our Vice President, who we've appointed as our Chef de Mission, is down in Tokyo right now attending a Chef's meeting. I just came off the phone with her just prior to this uh, interview. Um, she's having long, hectic days. Um, she has indicated they are 80, 85 percent ready to go. Um, as far as our athletes concerned, and Bramwin and I, since Bramwin's come back home and we went to school together, I'm a little bit older than Bramwin, but our, our desires are exactly the same. It's about getting our youth to reach the pinnacle of their career and hopefully representing their country and what can we do to help develop it. And this is an ongoing conversation. And there's one or two things that have happened since I've come home, which I, I just don't want to speak about, but Bramwin and I talked at great length at, at my hotel about how to raise the athletes' um, expectations, um, preparation, and all that sort of thing. And, and there's hopefully something that I could discuss with you um, after this interview. Um, but our, the world is their oyster. Um, I, I ironically heard a comment yesterday that the BOA doesn't do enough for our athletes. We have the money. We have the money to support our athletes in their preparation for their goals and their aspirations. Apply. We don't deal directly with athletes. We directly deal with the national governing body. If you have a program in place, and you know, and we've talked about it, a four-year plan, make an application. We will support you. Very rarely do we turn you down. And if we turn you down, it's only because your proposal to us doesn't meet the expectations of what is required to get you to the highest level. We're here for you. We have money. We have coaching money. We have development money. So don't make the comment that the BOA will not support you. That's what we're here to do. And we have a lot of work ahead of us. Um, and our athletes, unfortunately, because not, we did not have the results that we expected at the Pan Am Games, have to work a little bit harder now. Mm -hmm. And we're here to help them get to that level, get the points or whatever the qualification is that is necessary to go to the Olympic Games. Um, we're here for you, and we will support you 200%. Thank you, ladies. Thank, Thank you, you, Earl.